And welcome once again to another episode of the Horizon Roundtable. I am Bob McDonald, and you can find me on Twitter at Bob McDonald. Uh, unfortunately, Jimmy Lemke is uh, still not with us. You can find him, of course, on, on Twitter at Panther U. Uh, but coming in with us today, uh, I really wanted to get these guys, one of these guys on. Um, as you know, uh, the Valhalla Vanguard has been on uh, with Jack Talley uh, many, many times, uh, a couple of times with us. Uh, this time we've got uh, one of the other co-hosts, uh, Troy Corns. Yeah, how's it going, Bob? How's it going, everybody? All right, um, and of course you can find the uh, the podcast uh, on on Twitter at nk. At, uh, sorry, I was going to give yours first and mine second. No, I'm never doing. Uh, Horizon <laughs> Roundtable's podcast is on the the on Twitter at Horizon RT, um, and the Valhalla Vanguard. You can you can follow those guys at NKU Valhalla, and of course they have their podcast where you can find on uh, you can actually find on iTunes and basically find it wherever you find. Ours. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah. Um, so I, I've been meaning to get you guys on for a while, but this week in particular was very it was pretty important because this was an important week for for Northern Kentucky in terms of the in terms of the competition. And man, talk about blowing everybody away! <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, so, um, so yeah, the, uh, the big test, of course, was on Saturday against Oakland. And Oakland, um, I, what is it with you guys in Oakland, man? Because no half time, I, I was a little concerned because you guys, because because obviously this was this was at BB&T Arena and that place was packed. Uh, and, I think we got six thousand seven hundred and yeah. ninety-two. That was the that's the uh, regular season yeah. attendance record. So yeah, so when that's going on, I mean. <laughs> So and then you know Oakland you know Oakland comes out and they're you know they're going toe to toe with you guys and and I you know and you know, obviously the yeah, because of kind of the you know kind of how things have gone with Oakland against Northern Kentucky lately I I've, I I openly wondered you know what's going on here um, but then you know Northern Kentucky the second half Northern Kentucky just kicked it in another gear um, so that's you know and and then came out and you know came out with the, came out with the win um, kind of solidified their place uh, at the top of the Horizon League standings. So. Yeah, it was it was definitely one of those feelings. I mean, you you've probably had those feelings before when you're watching a first half game and you're like, uh oh, here we go. I'm a and then, State fan. I have those feelings <laughs> every game. Yeah, and you just know it's not going to be a good night. But there was something in that building. I tweeted from my personal account. I said it's a goosebumps kind of feeling. And I knew walking around that arena in between uh, the two halves, second half, they were going to come out strong. I just knew it. I knew that they were not going to let this entire crowd be let down and at the end of the game uh during like the press conference and stuff or whatever whatever you want to call it um Jalen Tate said that the same exact thing you can't let a, a crowd like that down and the energy from the crowd was just absolutely phenomenal I've never been to a game where the the momentum was that strong yeah yeah the uh yeah I I yeah the um and one other thing yeah and I, I, one other thing that I that I do have to point because you know obviously one other thing that I did uh that I think comes out of this week is that you can pretty much, uh, this is the week where Drew McDonald won the Player of the Year award. Yeah, absolutely. I was literally just thinking about that uh, when I when I remembered. Xavier Hills May is really the only clear-cut uh, competition for him, and if he puts up six points against the league's best team, um, standings-wise, yeah. come on now. Now, now uh, as I understand it also, um, I, I know during the broadcast, and by the way, the, just to uh, just to clarify, this was the ESPN broadcast, so I was getting, I was getting Northern yeah. Kentucky's uh, not not Neil Rule, love Neil Rule, but um, <laughs> yeah. they did men- they did mention the fact that Xavier Hill Mays was actually hurt during that game. Oh, was he? So oh, that okay. was uh, that kind of hobbled him a little bit. So that was, uh, but uh, I, I, so that was that that was something. But um, yeah, that was that was definitely the type of. That, that was definitely the ty- this was definitely the type of week that Drew McDonald um, w- was probably hoping to have, especially against um, you know against Oakland, which is which was kind of the you know s- you know circle one of the circle the calendar type of games, especially yeah. kind of a revenge game type of deal. And then you know just the, the, the game before against Detroit, just absolutely destroying the Titans. Um, oh yeah, absolutely destroying them. And um, and I actually wanted to ask you about this as well because. I know this is uh, uh, apparently Mike Davis was just in has just been a really bad mood this week. 
Um, last yet uh, against the game uh, in the game against uh, Wright State where they lost by twenty, he got he got ejected. <laughs> he got double teamed. Yeah. So he got ejected. So he, yeah, he's not he's not having a good week. And then no, not at he, all. So I, I gotta ask, and I don't know if you know the entire story about this. So what exactly happened? Because apparently Mike Davis yelled at somebody in the crowd yeah. during your game on Thursday. What? Do you have any idea what exactly kind of how what's what kind of transpired there? Because I'm a I, I've heard some things, but I kind of wanted to see if you knew a little bit more about that. Yeah. So to to kind of backtrack a little, um, when they when Detroit Mercy was pushing the ball up the court um, toward near the end of the game, I think there were about three minutes left. Um, Davis's shoe fell off. Like Antoine Davis's shoe fell off. Oh no! And you're, you're supposed to just leave it. And he picked it up. And as he was running on the court, before he got to half court, he threw the uh, shoe behind him, which I, I forget what, what team it was. It... Detroit Mercy throwing shoes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's this a consistent what thing. Last week. Yeah, and uh, so he threw the shoe behind him. It Obviously, it, it wasn't really in the way no, of anything. Geez. Like, it's just one of those, like, small little dumb oh, yeah. rules that, um, yeah. that he got. I mean, he and he got. He didn't. So, so to be clear, and, I, and I, obviously I was watching the Cleveland State game and being yeah. very depressed. Um, but so I, and by the way, by that point in time, it was if it was three minutes left in the game, I think Northern Kentucky was up by about thirty by that point. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it was the game so was over, was, but he just threw a shoe behind him to get it out of the way. So, um, so and, it was. So, so it wasn't the situation last week uh, against Youngstown State where one of the assistants just hurled the hurled the shoe across the court. It was just no. I'm just trying to. It's it just sounds like it was. Just, he was just trying to get it out of the way and then go on yeah. with his day. Yeah, because he picked it up and was running with it, and then someone from the bench told him to drop it, and so he threw it behind him, and he just kept rolling. So I, so he got tacked up at that point, and um, like again, one of those stupid technicals. And then um, Mike Davis was obviously mad because your team's down by you know almost thirty points, and yeah. you get a technical for throwing a shoe to get it out of the way. And so he was arguing, and it was actually really funny because the Mike Davis was just arguing, and NKU basically took it as a timeout. And uh, they were they were game planning like their final uh, couple minutes, and then Mike Davis was just arguing and arguing and arguing. And um, what I think happened to like kind of spark that uh, post game uh, post game heat with Mike Davis is someone behind like the Detroit Mercy bench ah, okay. may have like said something back to him. We still haven't confirmed exactly what they said because uh, the person that we were going to reach out to we could not get into contact with at the game. But we um, sounds like something you'll have in your podcast. Oh yeah, and so we we heard we heard him just yelling and saying, uh, I, I think I think we made a post about it, but talking about oh we'll see you guys next year or something like that, and we'll come uh, we'll come whoop on you or something like that. Um, so yeah, definitely, um, I'm sure I'm sure he said the, the fans were probably a little intoxicated. Um, they probably said some things that pissed uh, Mike Davis off, who's losing by 30 points, um, where his son's the only contributor for that team. Um, so definitely. He was in the heat of the moment, but this is a consistent thing for him. So that's it. yeah, that's he's got to be careful. Which is interesting. It's not you no know, knowing knowing kind of the history of Mike Davis as I do. I mean, and I don't really understand that either because you know he was at Indiana replacing Bobby Knight. Yeah, and Indiana fans, uh, they can be way more lunatic fringe than anybody on the planet. Mm-hmm. So uh, you'd have thought that he'd have you know picked up a pretty thick skin after that, but. Uh, Apparently not. No. Uh, so yeah. So so yeah. So and then he. But man, I, yeah, I, I can't believe it. another shoe incident at Detroit Mercy. Yeah. That, that, when I saw that, I was like, they definitely have had this problem before. So I don't know <laughs> why, like how this is, keeps happening to them. And then you figure it out. So somebody better get. Yeah. Oh man. Somebody. Uh, somebody better invest. Uh, either somebody better get a better shoe contract or invest in a better. Uh, <laughs> In, a, in better tape. I don't well, know they need to, if they're going to invest in new shoes, they need to invest in new uniforms because those are the ugliest here. Not as ugly as, I'm going to take a jab, not as ugly as Cleveland State's uniforms, but man, Detroit Mercy's uniforms are ugly. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, those are, 
yeah, uh, the one the one aspect of their uniforms that I don't really understand is the fact that they do not have the names on the back. It's like yes. they pretty much they pretty much got them from you know they, they it, it, it only it seems like and I'm sure they're not, but it does seem like they they just you know they're like those rec league uniforms that yeah. they just use over and over again and say okay you're a size yeah. uh, you're a size extra large here you go this is the number you are today and here's the number you are today and yeah. uh, be sure to wash it and because it'll be in the it be in a closet for six months and again yeah. and so, at yeah, the end of the season oh yeah just turn your jerseys in yeah, that's what I'm saying. And yeah, be sure to wash them because yeah, we we don't want them being musty for six well, months. <laughs> I'll, I'll say I'll say the the Horizon League kind of gets shafted on the whole uniforms because man, some of these uniforms are just terrible. And I guess we get the premium package for Adidas and not the uh, not the nice package. So. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> uh, so, um, oh, one other thing, and, and then I actually also wanted to bring this up as well, because this is actually something I saw on the broadcast. Um, during halftime of the Northern Kentucky-Oakland game, this has actually been a point of contention for a lot of Horizon League fans about um, not necessarily that Indianapolis was picked as the future Horizon League tournament site, but the way yeah. it was done. So, so Northern Kentucky. So during halftime, Northern Kentucky's uh, uh, AD Ken Bottoff. Yeah, he, great he guy. Spilled, he spilled some tea, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, at the game, so I didn't hear any of the broadcast. Oh man, yeah, you, it, yeah, you. If you, and it was on ESPN three, so if you have, uh, you'll probably, you could probably. Oh yeah, I can go back and watch it. Um, but yeah, during halftime, he basically was like, "We were not aware that." You know, we were not aware that Indianapolis, for oh, wow. some reason, was part of the bidding process and was able to be a part of the bidding process. Because yeah. he said otherwise, I'd have been, you know, he'd have he'd have put uh, Northern Kentucky in. And I think he also mentioned something about uh, trying to get, uh, trying to put something together with, uh, you know, with, uh, I want to say, the U.S. Bank Center. Or yeah, Center U.S. Or Bank Arena in yeah. Centaur Center. Or something like that. And, yeah. And it didn't, uh, that did not, I, I guess Bank it did not come terrible. to fruition. But yeah, that was kind of the thing. It was like, he was, uh, he was very... Uh, he seemed to be very disappointed, and um, I'm sure that's uh, I'm sure that's PC for saying he was massively pissed off. At, uh, yeah, uh, at, I mean, I I, I think he I basically th- said what we were all saying. Pretty yeah, much. I think when the news first came out, I my first reaction was, oh wow, great, it's not in Detroit anymore. Detroit's <laughs> terrible. But then I started thinking about it, and I was like, "Well, it's it's in a good it's in a good uh, distance for just about every team, yeah. except for one team, and that's well, IUPUI." That's, well, yeah, and so. I, the, the way they did that, though, I didn't know. I, I thought they just kind of yeah, picked it, but there were so many we, there were so many questions about it, and uh, when it, they initially announced that they were going to be looking for, a, I know in our podcast we we I knew it was going to end up in Indianapolis, but then you know about a month later we found out that you know there was this stipulation in there, which by the way is confirmed by Botoff that yeah. you know teams that primarily host uh, the uh, ve- um, cities whose venue is the primary home site for a Horizon League team were not allowed to bid. Yeah. And so apparently that what bought off basically confirmed what we all thought in the first place. So I thought so that was that was an interesting um that was interesting. I found that yeah. very interesting. Um it, it, that is and incidentally probably not the best thing to do to annoy the shit out of the one A D whose team happens to be at the top of the standings. Yeah. Just and, kinda throwing that out there. Yeah Just and, to be silly. And you know you know every every team would love, absolutely love to have have their uh, their home be the the uh, the site for yeah. any tournament play, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't know, just the way if the way that it sounded like they did it, it was like, all right, we already have a plan. We just have to go with it. We're just going to go with it. We don't care who who we piss off. We're just going to go. But the, but why go through this? I mean, I, I, and I said this. I said this verbatim. Why are you going through this charade? We know where this is going. And yeah. instead of the instead of them, they, they kept the charade up. Yeah. They, they put this. They, they, apparently, they put this committee together and worked with a consultant and all this other silly crap that they didn't really need to do because we all. No. I knew in freaking September when they announced that Motor City Madness wasn't going to be there anymore. wasn't going to be the tournament. wasn't going to be. Yeah. Know, wasn't going to be Motor City Madness. They weren't going to go to Indianapolis, which incidentally is what they should have did in the first place. I mean, yeah. That was, uh, that if was they would have done point of contention for a lot of people that that it should have been in Indianapolis. Uh, Indianapolis to begin with. I mean, so yeah. I mean, on, on the one hand, better late than never. You know, on the other. 
other hand, well, now IEPUI's there, and, you know, now it looks kind of sketchy. And yeah. Botoff just basically confirmed what we were all thinking. Yeah, yeah it's it's definitely it's definitely a, um, a sticky situation that they got themselves into, and they knew they were getting themselves into it, too. But they didn't need to. They could have yeah. just said, hey, Hey, we're gonna work with uh, hey, we're gonna work with Farmers Insurance Arena, and we're gonna we're gonna work on getting it there. Yeah, they said that at the beginning instead of doing this silly bid process that was that was going nowhere. Yeah, just, just cut out the middleman, work with them, get it done, call it a day. I mean, yeah. yes, we would have been a little bit indignant that you know this is IUPUI's host arena, but then you wouldn't have had to go through the cloak and dagger thing of saying, oh well, we are gonna have this stipulation in there. Yeah, I mean, I'm I would I mean as as much as I, I don't really have an issue with Detroit only because of the fact that it's like literally three hours away. And, you know, my my brother actually lives in the suburbs, so I probably yeah. have, and I've never been, so I don't. You know, I've, I've never actually been to Motor City Madness. I know uh-huh. I'm, a, I'm a fraud. Leave me alone. Well, <laughs> I've, I've actually I'm a, I'm I I never fraud. went. So the yeah. year the year that NKU won, yeah, I was actually um, I was actually vacationing in Gatlinburg for our spring break with my girlfriend at the time, yeah. and I I didn't at that point NKU wasn't really as prominent as it was now so no one really like for lack of a better word no one really cared because we didn't think we were gonna win and after that first game it was like everyone started realizing how important it was and like what was actually going on and so yeah i've never been um and last year was the same i was on spring break last year so um but it's it's crazy it's crazy to think that um that there's a lot of people who haven't really been there, who haven't really seen the environment of Detroit. And now, now I will say this: I do know that everybody who has been to Little Caesars Arena says yeah. the arena is like super top notch. Yeah. The, the the surrounding area, the area around Little Caesars Arena, um, it is not, it is not as they, uh, it, it is not the Detroit that we uh, that we know. Yeah. That we that we that we're that scares us at night. Um, yeah. No, it is actually you know obviously they you know this is what happens when Dan Gilbert basically buys up everything. So you know he'll, he'll you know have you ever seen the movie RoboCop? That's where he's going. Hey, um, so one thing before we move on to something, the one thing I did notice that I thought was pretty cool was the was the bear between um the the Valhalla van. Yes. Yes. I, I, I don't know, but we need a little bit more of this. Yes, we, really, we do. You guys we really are really, do. I know you guys have been, I know that uh, you've been jawing with uh, Matt Dudek, who's been, uh, who's, uh, who's filled in for host where, with us a few times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, uh, I, I need more of this. I'm not going to lie. I, we do. <laughs> we, we were having, we were having the, uh, uh, a DM conversation afterwards. I was like, guys, we need this. Like, eat, regardless of what happened with NKU tonight, we need this. This is the kind of stuff that other schools need to pick up on. Because yes. when we look at it, I, I don't personally know OU basketball guy and um, and whoever runs Grizz Gang, but yeah. we all have a common interest, and that's Horizon League basketball. That's mm-hmm. college basketball in general, but we all have this common purpose, and so why not get your craziest fans, why not get your most passionate fans, hop on Twitter, make an account, and just go back and forth with people. It's so much fun. Like Even to, even last night, I'm not a betting man, right? But, uh-huh. but I did put myself in a situation where I was like, okay, Screw it, NKU's winning tonight. That's what's gonna happen. And then in, after the first half, I was like, okay, I may have screwed myself over. <laughs> then I'm like, you know what? I'm confident they're gonna win. They're gonna pull through. And like, just having that ability to do that on Twitter was yeah. great. And just have another understanding account too, because they understand what we go through, especially with like uh, the student turnout. Sometimes, I mean, they get great student turnout consistently, but they yeah. they understand it as well. And so it's good to just be able to the kind of bounce and, back and, and I forth. Will say this: as, 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 as having followed the Horizon League for you know, having followed the Horizon. In league for forever and ever and ever, um, and up to including you know when when Oakland came in first of all, first came in the Grizz Gang is probably uh, is is kind of the gold uh, you know, no, no offense to you guys no. but the Grizz Gang is kind of the gold standard yeah. of student section so uh, so so it, it's it's good that you, you know you know and, and it's and you know I'm sure that their their numbers are kind of something you guys in, uh, at least uh, aspire to you guys. yeah their student numbers are insane i mean yeah. students we we haven't fully had a buy-in with our students which is crazy because of all the success we've had mm-hmm. but we haven't had a full buy-in and students understand really what this nku team is what john brandon the john brandon effect has really brought yeah so when they when they realize that it might be too late because you know how mid-major successful mid-major coaches are 
Now, this is the other thing, yeah, and, and we've talked a little bit about this, uh, Jimmy and I have talked about this, about um, how, yeah, and we understand, obviously, uh, you know, we know understand the nature of the beast yeah. with mid-major coaches. What I've... I've hoped and I've seen previously is that at some point in time, where where Horizon League teams get to where they have a good coach, where they have kind of a succession land. Um, this is what happened to Butler mm-hmm. before they left. Uh, Valparaiso, same thing, before they left. They they had a plan in place. Um, so the goal is, I th- I, 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 I'd like to think that the goal uh, for all the Horizon League schools is that, that have successful coaches that end up moving on is to have a, an effect effective um, succession plan in place. I, I'll, I'm not going to lie, I, you know, after talking, after listening to Botoff last night, um, I'm convinced he, I'm sure he's got something in his head already. Yeah. Well, what I, what I, what I'm confident. That guy is a sharp cookie, I'm telling he's, you. He's great. Also, he has glasses, so he wears glasses, but they, like, disconnect mm-hmm. in the middle, so it's kind of like a, kind of like a uh, necklace that he wears. It's a Ken Botoff yes. staple. But anyway. <laughs> um, I don't think he had him on during the broadcast. I no, he, he probably took those off, but. Um, Actually, you know what? The, the other thing, too, and I can't remember. Oh, was he the – I think Botoff was, in fact, the AD at Green Bay, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not too sure about so that, but yeah, probably. Yeah, I not remember. I'm pretty sure he was yeah. because – so he's familiar. So so, so him him and LaCrone have met. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the thing that makes me confident about John Brandon, I understand nature of the beast. That's how things are. Um, today I was reading a uh, post about – someone was talking about the Northern Kentucky team, and then they mentioned how, how good John Brandon was. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, teams are talking about him. Last year, his name was in an article for the Xavier head coach, but it was like, he's not going there. There's no way. And so the thing that makes me confident in that he's going to be here for a bit is because he's from northern Kentucky. He literally grew up 10 minutes away from uh, BB&T Arena and he just absolutely has a full buy-in. His family fully buys in. I know they they would do that for any team, but still, his family fully buys in. His daughters are um, they they go to school around here and they they're invested into their basketball around here. And sure. So that makes me very confident that this is not going to be the same kind of story that you see you know at other yeah. places where. I'll be interested. Yeah, I will be interested in seeing that. I mean, I, and I, I hope that's the case. Obviously, you know, given you know the. Uh, just and maybe this is because of the the fact that in you know in Valparaiso the Drew family basically owns Valparaiso. So yeah. I mean, it was first it was Homer and then it was Scott and then it was Homer again and then it was Rice yeah. and then um then they went outside the family so that must have been an interesting conversation but uh but yeah so that's gonna be I'll be interested in seeing kind of how that goes but um but um so the other thing I wanted to talk about is that Cleveland State was officially not not mathematically eliminated this week so I get another week of trepidation <laughs> hooray but it, and 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 this also and this is why i'm sad that jimmy's not on because jimmy had a really crappy week uh, milwaukee had a really yeah. crappy week um but yes but cleveland state is uh, one one game number two and they did it with tyree appleby he's a dog oh my he the first time and i can't even believe this the first time in cleveland state history that a player has hit a triple double mm-hmm. Yesterday was the first. Tyree Appleby, 19 points, 11 rebounds, 11, 11 re- How How tall is he again? He's like, what, six foot? He, yeah, he's six foot. Six foot. And he was able yeah. to get 11 rebounds over who? Yeah, yeah. Who, did, who yeah. did Cleveland State play? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Milwaukee's not yeah. a small team. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they are not. Inve- yeah. So, yeah. So, so Tyree Appleby, and it's interesting because um, knowing knowing Cleveland State, ba- the history of Cleveland State basketball as I do, as opposed to some others who have no sense of history whatsoever, and I, 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 I've chided them all. Yeah. There, there's so many players over the course of the last, you know, many, many decades that could have been this, you know, Franklin Edwards in the early early 80s, Mouse McFadden in any point in time during his career in the late 80s, Cedric Jackson when he was here, and oh, not, uh, you know, uh, Cedric Jackson when he was here, Norris Cole was the closest, yeah, Norris was the Cole. one who came closest, and he didn't do it, and by the way, he tweeted, he, he actually tweeted at uh, Tyree, because mm-hmm. Tyree, when Tyree came out, uh, was done, he's been like, basically, he's been on Twitter the whole, I don't think he slept, yeah, because <laughs> he's been like, because he's been like, responding to just about everybody, everybody who's tweeted at him about, Congratulating him for the, which is which by the way I think is outstanding I love that I, I do 
do like that, you know, I do like the, his dad. He's, you know, the interaction um, that he's had on social media with this. I, I think it's, I think it's great. Yeah. Right? I, I, I just think, obviously, in, in the case of Cleveland State this year, it is. And I, I sat there during the whole entire, the rest of the entire game. I mean, and I looked, and I'm like, this is the team I expected coming out of coming into the conference. Yeah. This is the team I expected to play like this. This is, this was. I did not expect them to be a one. I didn't expect them to be a team that, as of Saturday, was on the cusp of being mathematically eliminated from the conference tournament. Yeah. In the three weeks before the end of the freaking season, I did not expect. This is not the team. This is the team that I expect to see. This is the team that we saw glimmers of. This is the team we saw against Youngstown State. Yeah. This is the team that we saw in Wisconsin against both Milwaukee and Green Bay when they were up by double digits to, to both of them. Yeah. This is the team I expected. They definitely, as I like I said earlier, I pegged them to be in the middle, the upper middle pack of the Horizon League going into the tournament. And, and as funny as it is, I pegged the Detroit Mercy as being the Cleveland State this year of not being able to win a oh, game because yeah. no one knew how good Antoine Davis was. But no, nobody did. Um, but Cleveland State has just they they haven't had it this year, and I don't know why no. because they had so much I, they they I ran sacked through the tournament last year, and they basically have the same pieces. I mean, I don't know exactly who who left at a Cleveland State, but well, they had six they had six seniors. Yeah, but I mean, going into the and the, so they had a bunch of new faces coming. Yeah, in. um, but but they the the, the idea was is that they had this core nucleus of of Tyree Appleby and Steph Kenich and Cash Thomas was uh Cash Thomas was still on there. Um, they had a they had a transfer from DePaul Al Eichelberger coming in, and he'd been practicing with the team for a, uh, for for the last season because you know though he couldn't play because he was running. Yeah. And they had this uh they they had I figured that uh, most of the freshmen were going to be kind of you know at the very beginning were going to be kind of core components. I heard I heard nothing but great things about uh you know uh, about Rashad Williams obviously um so um including from uh from former Detroit Mercy great Rashad Phillips who by the way as I under- as we as we have on the record uh because we had Rashad Phillips on our podcast he, that uh, Rashad Williams is in fact Rashad Phillips's namesake we didn't I did which I did not yeah. know prior to to being on the podcast so yeah so he he, he if if Rashad Phillips is saying that Rashad Williams is going to be something something good mm-hmm. you you listen to that guy yeah the- <laughs> um so so but so I figured that you know you were gonna, you would have, I I thought and then I also the other the other element of that was and then they had obviously uh some other elements to it as well but the other thing too was and this is something that kind of I thought would you know spur on the development process a little bit more than normal is that they actually went overseas and went to Italy play mm-hmm. um so they went to that trip and actually did pretty really well so um maybe that that was a so so with that in mind oh you know, my expectations and, and clearly the expectations of a lot of other people were a little bit more elevated were they going to compete against northern Kentucky this year no nobody expected that um but for them to be I, I did totally expect them to be a part of this kind of log jam in the middle yeah. that is currently going on right now but but that didn't but none of that happened. None. I mean, they at all. To, I mean, they the I mean, from the beginning of the the conference schedule where they went in, where uh, Oakland and Detroit just basically dismissed them. It just went downhill from there. Yeah. I, I thought for sure that they would go, you know, and, and you you still kind of had that sense of optimism where they are going to turn it around. Um, although the Wisconsin trip is is notoriously tough. Mm. Um, but again, they 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 were in a position to be able to do well in those in, in those those games and it just didn't happen um and so yeah your guess is as good as mine um the 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 current narrative right now is that they're a young team which i do not buy and it's the near the end of the season yeah i mean that's it i'll, I'll say so I, from what i've seen from some of the bottom tier teams right now yeah they're not only youthful but not just youthful but they're the experience is building and honestly yeah. especially like a team like youngstown state mm-hmm. they're gonna be a problem and yeah i'm and just I'm using them as an example because what Actually, I'm glad you're also. I'm glad you brought them up because this is the, kind of a segue to them. Yeah, and I just I, I I think that there's a lot of not just younger as in like oh well they haven't been or they're they're you know freshmen and sophomores but the experience that they're gaining through this and then once all these once the eight teams get into the tournament they're gonna really see how uh, the whole lay of the land goes and we're gonna see how good these teams actually yeah. are especially because you know what what kind of sucks is that no matter how well NKU does it takes one loss for 
yeah. a team to just be bounced. And so, That's right. uh, but the regular season, I mean, the, the record doesn't show it, but if you, if you're at the games, if you're seeing what some of these teams are bringing, it's, it's going to be a pretty good future for the Horizon League. But like I said, as, as as happy as I am that they won on Saturday, and as happy as I am for Tyree Appleby's triple double, I'm, I'm still going into because uh, they're playing uh, they're playing Green Bay on uh, no no they're playing UIC on Thursday. Yeah. Um, and so they're they, they're probably at the cusp of being mathematically eliminated. Probably, <laughs> probably just prepare uh, for but at it. Least I, at least I don't have to sit here and, and grouse about how they're not even going to be in the tournament three week conference tournament three weeks before the actual regular yeah. season. I'll, I'll grouse about that next week. Or maybe, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But I'm glad you brought up. I'm glad you brought up Youngstown State because Youngstown State was it has is on fire right They're now. Four in a row. Four in a row. Four in a row. And man, let me tell you so the the I the uh, again Milwaukee is having such a bad week. I mean they, yeah. uh, they go first of all they lose to Cleveland State and then um and and that's a follow up to um they had that game they the oh, man they had that game and Garrett Covington just stuck a dagger in their hearts. Oh man, that was that was such a that was such a great shot by him. Um, but you look at but as you said when you look at a team like when you're looking at a team like Youngstown State. Youngstown State uh, got the buzzer beater against Milwaukee and then turned around and dominated Green Bay. Yeah, I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I saw that when I, when when the, that game was going on because they were just absolutely playing out of their minds. On, yeah, the game game. the game against KU at Youngstown State was not a not a cakewalk like I thought it was going to be. Um, they definitely gave a lot of trouble for NKU. It's only it was only a, yeah. an eighty two seventy four game, which which yeah. sounds like a, a bigger deficit, but like if you actually look at the game, Game and look at how well they played. That's scary. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. And yeah, it's just and, and it's amazing. Yeah, the we, and you've seen flashes and, and again you've seen flashes of it. Um, in the you know you've seen flashes of it throughout the season. Now, of course, you know Youngstown State is is notoriously slow in the non-conference mm-hmm. schedule, as we know. Um, although I will say this, um, you know that uh, that uh, I was paying attention to the game that Ohio State game they were yeah. playing. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I mean, it, that that was they. they they, they held they hung they hung with Ohio State a lot tighter than I thought yeah. they would. But um but yeah, so so young sounds and again, this goes back to what you were talking about, that young core. And at this point in time, and, and I, you saw it on in full display against against Green Bay, where they have um, you know, obviously their their big scorers right now are they've got they got Garrett Covington. Um their their big rebounder, of course, is gonna be is is Nas Bohan. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's their he's their he's their primary guy so but the other thing too is the, their freshman Darius Williams. yeah I was just looking at his stuff I mean this guy I mean he is really he's really come into he, he's really come into it and and it looks like that Youngstown State has finally gotten the pieces together mm-hmm. um, I've talked on the show about uh, uh, a few times about Devin Morgan about what he brings to the table um, in this game you saw some of uh, you saw some of Jelani Simmons you saw some of uh, Noe Annabeer you you see a lot of those guys. I mean, this was probably the you know Dan- Danell Cathcart is on there too, and I, I think he's, he's a big he, coming off the bench guy too. He's primed for a breakout game too. Yeah. I think. So with that, hopefully not on February twenty first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just not on February. Yeah, not. So, um, so you look at this, and, and and so instead of so so what an amazing turn of events for them because. They were, you know, it was looking like it was going to be Cleveland State and Youngstown State getting shut out of this whole thing. Period. Yeah. And, you know, and now you, and now it was, I don't know what happened after the Cleveland State game, but apparently Jared Calhoun must have light a, lit a fire under Youngstown State's ass. I guess so. They had game. to because it was not looking good. It was not, well, well, I mean, Devin Morgan almost single-handedly got him back and yeah. clawed him back from a 24-point deficit, which also scared me a lot, because I had to, like, I don't, <laughs> please don't be, don't, don't be the team that blows a 24-point lead. Can't do that. You cannot blow a lead that big. No, which thankfully they did that game. Yeah. God. I would have never heard the end of it, believe me. I have, I have followers who would have been more than happy to rub it in for the rest of the season. Yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, so um, but yeah, that that must that to me that was the turning point. Yeah. And now instead of them kind of being on the brink of now now them being on the brink, they are they are actually very well positioned to you know move a little further up in the standings. Yeah. I'm not saying they're gonna you know I'm not saying they're gonna fight with uh, fight for one of those top four spots that uh, will have I, a, I think uh, will have foam field. I do, however, think that they definitely have an opportunity to you know kind of turn it around. Finally. Yeah. Well, they can they they have IUPUI next. If they can be IUPUI and kind of start making their way back up, they could find themselves in one of those four spots. But yeah. I think that's that's really gonna be occupied by the four that are there right now. Yeah. I I think at this point in time the the in no, in this order I think it's gonna well not in no particular order but the first two I think will be um it'll be Northern Kentucky Wright State yeah. uh, UIC and I think uh, it looks it's looking like Oakland mm. right now will be that fourth. Yeah. Level. Oakland and IU Oakland IUPUI and Green Bay and Youngstown State are all within like a game of each other. Yeah. So. I mean I I do think that Oakland kind of pulls I I think Oakland kind of pulls that out. Um but the big but uh, you know the bigger thing um now that Youngstown State is out. Yeah, <laughs> it's out of the cellar. Uh, Milwaukee is in the cellar, so um, yeah, that's going to be an issue. Um, yes, and uh, we're we're getting closer and closer to uh, to uh, to Matt and uh, Carrick Jones uh, filling in for us during turn uh, filling in for Jimmy and I during tournament time. Because let's face it, we're not having we're not going to have anything to talk yeah. about because our teams won't be there. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, it, yeah. So that's I don't know what I don't know what exa- I mean. The man, this this weekend did not go well for Milwaukee at all. It does not. Um, and they they're gonna have to they're gonna have to do some serious soul search and get out get out of that position because right now they're two games out. Uh, they're two games out of eighth eighth place and uh they gotta work on it. And the week is gonna be not any easier. So yeah, it's it's this stretch is one of the toughest basketball to play because if if you're yeah, not on no, it, if you're not it, on it's it, February man, it's it's February. This is what's Separates the men from the boys. Yeah, and right now the teams that need to get hot are getting hot. Losing four in a row or five in a row from Milwaukee is not is not boating well for them. Yeah, that is new. Actually, they lost five. In yeah, the- yeah, yeah. I corrected myself. I was looking at. <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's not a that's not a good thing for for Milwaukee. So they're they're. Well, they they're end they end the there. season with Detroit Mercy and then the top four teams. So. Oh jeez. Oh. Yeah, I, I yeah they're, they're, they're I I don't envy them. Yeah. I believe believe you me, I do not um, envy them. But, well, so so um, that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up absolutely. for us, Troy. Again, thank you very much for joining us today, Bob. I appreciate um, it. This was awesome. All right, all right. And again, everybody, um, you know, Troy, he's a part of the the the, the Valhalla Vanguard crew. Uh, again, they're on Twitter at v- NKU Valhalla. Um, Valhalla Vanguard. Um, I don't know when you guys are gonna have your new next podcast up, but uh, be on the lookout for that. And uh, and um, as as always, you can find uh, episodes of the Horizon Roundtable podcast on SportsHacks.com. Jx.com, and you can find us um, pretty much everywhere where uh, where podcasts are found, um, including you know, you know, wow, I think we're on Spotify, we're yeah, on radio now, and yeah, iHeartRadio. By the way, I, and by as an aside, um, I am very, I I don't listen to iHeartRadio all that much, but uh, I did watch, listen to the Ron Burgundy podcast. <laughs> so uh, to to be in to be in the same to be on the same platform as the Ron Burgundy podcast, I think it's incredible. Is, well, yeah, I, I I thought it was, yeah. and we were there first, so there you go. <laughs> but um. Yeah, but you can also uh, we're, we also have our uh, the Sports Hacks uh, YouTube channel we're on as well. So uh, so that that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up. And uh, thank you all for listening.